Among the last designs to be approved by British Rail before privatisation in 1994, the Class 323s are an underappreciated series of electric multiple units that have been the backbone of the commuter belts for both the West Midlands and Manchester. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing for these lowly commuter trains, as their introduction into service, despite much promise, was shambolic at best, and resulted in the demise of their parent company, compounded also by the painful hand of privatisation. The Class 323 story begins with the Cross City Line, a main commuter archery between Lichfield, Redditch, and, from 2018, Bromsgrove, via the bustling and congested Birmingham New Street. The Cross City Line, prior to its designation in 1978, was created through the combination of multiple existing lines that served the regions north and south of Birmingham, including the former London and North Western Railway Line between Birmingham and Derby via Sutton Coalfield, and the Birmingham and Gloucester Railway through Kings Norton and Longbridge to Barnt Green. At Barnt Green, Cross City services split between its two southern destinations, with half of trains continuing south to Bromsgrove, while the rest travel east on the only remaining section of the Gloucester Loop Line, terminating at Redditch. By 1978, the Birmingham commuter service, which predated the Cross City Line, had fallen into severe decay due to years of neglect by British Rail. The cash-strapped National Rail operator had reduced the service on the route to a very intermittent and unreliable collection of diesel commuter trains that ran only a few times per day. Therefore, during that year, a £7.4 million upgrade was implemented by the West Midlands Passenger Transport Executive, or WMPTE, with service frequencies increased to every 15 minutes between Longbridge and Four Oaks, the core section of the route, and trains operated by heavily refurbished Class 116 DMUs, which had originally been built for the Birmingham Commuter Belt in 1961. To further emphasise this upgrade, the route was renamed the Cross City Line. Throughout the 1980s, various improvements to these services were made regarding frequency and the spread of the route, including the extension of Cross City operations to Redditch in 1980 and increased trains to Litchfield City in 1986. Most notably, in 1988, the long-closed high-level platforms at Litchfield Trent Valley, which sat above the West Coast Main Line between Tamworth and Stafford, were reopened, with two trains per hour serving the station. However, by the end of the decade, the service was again becoming rather tired, thanks largely to the continued use of near 30-year-old Class 116 units. The situation was reversed, though, due to an unforeseen political circumstance. In December 1989, the sitting Conservative MP for the Mid-Staffordshire constituency, John Heddle, committed suicide due to serious debts incurred by failed property ventures, resulting in a by-election for 1990. In order to sway voters, the then Minister of Transport, Cecil Parkinson, promised the electrification of the Cross City Line between Litchfield, Trent Valley and Redditch, the decision effective February 1990. While his promise wasn't enough to win the election, with the Labour Party claiming victory under Sylvia Heal, electrification of the Cross City Line, as well as a full refurbishment of the stock and stations, was now underway, with funding split 70-30 between Centro, the successor to the West Midlands Passenger Transport Executive, and the regional railway sector of British Rail. Work on electrifying the route with 25 kV AC overhead wires began in May 1990, and was completed in June 1993. The refurbishment also included the rebuilding of Redditch, Alverchurch and Blake Street stations, which had become severely decrepit after years of neglect. Most importantly was the replacement of the existing DMU stock with new electric trains. Upon the launch of the project in February 1990, tenders were put out by British Rail to seven European rail manufacturers, including the Leeds-based Hunslet Transport Projects. Hunslet TPL was a subsidiary of the wider Hunslet Group, famous for their narrow-gauge engines and shunters, and had been set up by ex-Metro Camel engineers and managers. In June 1990, Hunslet TPL won the bid to satisfy an order for 37 brand-new three-car electric multiple units with a top speed of 90 miles an hour. The units, designated Class 323, would be built at the Hunslet Jack Lane factory in Leeds and were destined to be launched in 1993 to coincide with the activation of the new electric wires. 
In addition to Birmingham operations, the Greater Manchester Passenger Transport Executive, or GMPTE, had also shown interest in the new Class 323s and were eager to buy a small fleet of these units to replace ageing EMUs out of Manchester Piccadilly. Primarily, the 323s would replace the Class 304 of 1960 and the Class 305 of 1959 on services to Stockport, Glossop, Hazel Grove and the upcoming rail interchange at Manchester Airport. Such was the confidence in the Class 323 that British Rail made an option for an extra 14 units that could potentially see work on the West Yorkshire Passenger Transport Executive on the proposed electrified lines out of Leeds to Skipton, Bradford and Airedale. Hopes were high, and the Class 323s were to be the start of Hunslet TPL's exciting new career as a major player in European rolling stock manufacturing, their fate hinging entirely on these new units being the successful and superb new face of England's commuter belt. Sadly, they were not. During early testing, it was found that the gearbox was prone to failure, and that at high speed the trains would vibrate to the point of being severely unsafe due to uneven springs. By the time tests had revealed the flaws endemic to the class, most of these £2.2 .2 million units had already been built, and with their certification not valid due to the unsafe vibrations and mechanical issues, the class was embarrassingly placed into warm storage at MOD Bista, where they could be guaranteed safety from potential vandalism. The teething problems of the Class 323s, together with major cash flow strains due to the privatisation of British Rail, resulted in the West Yorkshire orders being axed in 1993, favouring instead the purchase of second-hand units from Network South East. The result was, in 1994, the start of Yorkshire Electric Services with 1959 built Class 308 units, of which 21 moved north from the London, Tilbury and South End Railway. The 308s would operate the Yorkshire Electric Services until the introduction of Class 333s in 2001, these units having been built by Siemens Mobility and CAF at Zaragoza, Spain. As for the Class 323s, there was some good news in that six of the 14 optional extra units were taken up by Greater Manchester, with the result of 43 sets being built overall, 17 to Manchester and 26 to the West Midlands. However, their introduction was significantly delayed, and thus they failed to meet the completion of the cross-city electrification in June 1993. In the meantime, British Rail drafted in a motley crew of second-hand units to operate the new service, including Class 304s, 308s and 310s. The 323s eventually slipped into service without fanfare in mid-1994, with the last of the older classes of EMU being retired in 1995. In addition to the UK batch, the Class 323 design also saw success on the export market when 18 train sets were ordered by KTM Commuter on services on the Kuala Lumpur Suburban Network in Malaysia. The KTM Class 81s, unlike the 323s, were built under licence by the Yenbaka Transport Company at their factory in Yenbak, Austria, and were delivered between 1994 and 1995. Aside from the fitting of single-leaf automatic doors instead of double doors, the Class 323 and Class 81 are largely identical, and their somewhat advanced railway technology meant they were a significant step up from the preceding series of KTM rolling stock. Unfortunately, following the buyout of Yembaka Transport by General Electric in 2003, the Class 81s began to run short of spare parts, and very quickly routine maintenance was missed. Finally, following the introduction of the KTM Class 92 in 2012, the Class 81s were retired and placed into storage by the end of the year, although a refurbishment undertaken in 2018 has seen five of the 18 units built return to work on the Batu Cave shuttle service to the north of the city. Sadly, while the Class 323's poor introduction wouldn't have been enough to severely harm the Hunslet TPL company, as 43 of the proposed 51 units were delivered, Privatisation meant that while the railway network reorganised itself, no new units were ordered by a rail operator for three consecutive years. At the time, Hunslet TPL had been discussing a promising deal with Strathclyde Passenger Transport to supply the Glasgow area with 21 new DMUs to replace the ageing Class 101s, these prospective units being designated the Class 157. 
However, with money becoming increasingly tight across the network, the Class 157 project was shelved, and, in 1995, Hunslet TPL closed their famous Jack Lane factory, their final products being a small fleet of narrow-gauge industrial locomotives. Today, Hunslet belongs to LH Group Services, a subsidiary of the Wabtec Group. Upon privatisation, the fleet designations remained the same as they'd done under British Railways. Originally, the 26 Centro units were based, together with the older Class 310s, at Bletchley Depot south of Milton Keynes, but were eventually reallocated to the Soho Depot in West Birmingham by the end of the 1990s, once Class 304s had been retired. Manchester's 17 units, meanwhile, have always been based at Longsight TMD on the approach to Manchester Piccadilly. By the time Central Trains took control of the West Midlands fleet on March 2, 1997, the service patterns of the Class 323s had been expanded to other commuter services in and around Birmingham, including the Warsaw to Wolverhampton stopping trains and services to Birmingham International. On the very same day as Central Trains, First Northwestern, originally known as Northwestern Trains, took over the Northwest Regional Railways franchise, including all 323 operations out of Manchester. By this stage, Manchester's 323s were running services from Manchester Piccadilly to Hadfield and Glossop along the former Woodhead Electric Railway, as well as to Stoke-on-Trent via Macclesfield and to Crewe either via Stockport or Manchester Airport. As time has progressed, the Class 323s have seen reliability improve substantially thanks to upgrades in the design and the removal of some of the original design flaws. Perhaps the most distinguishing feature of the Class 323s is their iconic, almost alien, traction motor sounds. This is caused by the gate turn-off, or GTO, thyristors, which cuts the power output from the three-phase motor as it switches through the unit's 17 gears. The units also have dynamic braking, which is used to help slow the train to a halt while also drawing power from the slowing action and feeding it back into the overhead wires. Today, all 43 of the Class 323s remain in service, and a recent major refurbishment has helped secure their futures. From 2018, both Manchester and West Midlands units were upgraded to meet disability legislation, which included a general refresh of the interior, changed seating arrangements, LED displays, and the fitting of a large disabled toilet with automatic sliding door. In terms of operations, as part of the commitments of the West Midlands franchise holder, West Midlands Trains, it is intended that Class 323s will be replaced by new electric multiple units from 2020, with 17 of their 26 units migrating north to the Manchester area. The fate of the remaining nine West Midlands units, however, has yet to be determined. As for the Manchester units themselves, despite talk of withdrawing these trains by the end of 2019 in favour of brand new Class 331s, the latest refurbishment, as well as the introduction of ex West Midlands Class 323s, appears to have ensured their continued presence in the northwest of England for many years to come. Nevertheless, while the Class 323 saw a very troubled entry into service, and the units have been largely overlooked due to their utilitarian role in life, these trains have still proven themselves a fundamental part of many commuter services across England. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like, and be sure to subscribe for more great content. Thank you very much, take care, and I'll see you next time.